Hello everyone and welcome to Ride Music. I'm John Ramsey and today I'm super excited because I'm with one of my favourite artists of all time, period. Uh, Joe Mulherin, aka Nothing Nowhere. Joe, how are you doing today, man? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, man. I'm doing. I'm super excited um, because we've kind of done a couple of interviews before where you've written things back to me, but it's great to actually get to speak to you, you know, face to face. Yeah, appreciate it. This is this is cool. I'm always down to chat. So, um, I want to get straight into the good stuff, man. You've got a new track coming out with Kenny Hoopla like tonight. So by the time it is out, mm-hmm. Blood will be out. Um, can you tell me a bit about like how that collab happened? Yeah, man. So, uh, so I recorded this song like I think a year and a half ago or something like that. That's kind of how things work these days. Is like mm. the songs that get released are like over a year old. And I think uh, I went to the studio. I went to Judge's studio, who's an amazing producer. Um, and we were just chilling out and just talking. And he uh, was just showing me some stuff he was working on. And he had this instrumental he started. Um, which became an instrumental for Blood. And it was kind of like this Joy Division, like post-punk, like really dark, sinister, like beat. And uh, I just was like, this is crazy. And I just started writing, walking around, pacing. And I think we wrote the, I wrote the whole song in like 20 minutes. It was the fastest song I've ever wrote. And we were just like, this is, this is rad. So that's kind of how it started. And then, uh, to take it to the next level I'm, I'm a big fan of kenny just as a person and as a musician so uh i reached out to him and he got on it and i think we got something really cool out of it dude the teaser looks sick as well the video it looks like it's some sort of like mission impossible scene man yeah well i mean if this would be out i could talk about it a little it bit, will right? be out yeah i'll be putting yeah, out yeah. Uh, wednesday yeah yeah so yeah so the video obviously um we wanted to do kind of like a movie kind of deal with it because it's like it is a very visual song and the song itself is kind of about like personifying yourself as a killer a metaphorical killer like killing relationships not actually killing Mm. people um so we had this idea of doing like a heist video and, and we went down to boston and we filmed this huge heist video but we worked with this director, Mason Mercer, and um, we wanted to do a little twist to it. So at the end of the video, instead of it being about money or something, we end up uh, rescuing endangered animals. So oh, it's a very wholesome kind of vibe. Yeah, that sounds yeah. awesome. I mean, how much of an actor are you? How did you find it being directed? Uh, I think it's really fun. Like, I'm definitely not an actor, but I, when I was younger, I was used to take, like, the family camera and just, like, do little skits and stuff and yeah. tape over my dad's recordings and whatever. <laughs> but uh, it, it's really fun. It, like, it gives me something to look forward to, and you get to play pretend, and it makes you feel like a kid again, almost, when you get to act. So You've obviously, like, done a few collabs in the past, but you don't do, like, an awful lot. Um, how, how do you decide like who you're going to work with? Mm, I think uh, the music is always a big thing. Like does their music speak to me? But honestly, like these days, um, I honestly feel like, you know, the person, like is the person genuine? Like is the person like, is this someone who is spreading kindness and is this someone who I would be friends with and would like to spend time with? That's what it comes down to really for me. It's like um, just surrounding myself with people who are like down to bring something positive into my life and hopefully I could bring something positive back into theirs. That's like where I'm at now. So the music is probably secondary to like how cool they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I noticed yeah. um, Masaji just dropped the back of his track list today and noticed you were on that as well. So that's something yeah. I'm super excited to hear because I know you worked with him back in 2018 on his album. I think you did a couple of tracks or, or a track with him. Um, mm-hmm. So it's going to be awesome to hear you two back together again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Zane, uh, he, he's a good friend of mine. He's also from London and uh, he... Uh, I don't know. He's just like a baby genius or something. Like I remember when he, he first started coming out, I mean, he's produced for little Yachty and little pump and everything on addition to what he does on his own. But 
when I first met him, he was literally like a baby and, and he's just gotten better and better every year. He's, he's awesome. Yeah. I feel like he's finally getting sort of the recognition he deserves here in the UK. Like he's getting some sort of like mainstream radio play as well. I, I didn't even know he was from the UK for, for a long time, but uh, he, he's awesome. Um, yeah. Obviously you've been working on the new album too and it, it's finished, right? It's done. Yeah. It's, it's done. done. Uh, you tweeted yeah. saying it, it's everything you ever wanted. Um, what does that mean then? What does that mean to you? Um, so I just think this album, I think with musicians, like when you make an album, it's like you want it to be a, a perfect, accurate representation of where you are in your musical journey, where you are in your life journey. And you just want the music to really like convey to others how you're feeling and, and sort of your essence. And I think that this this album does that perfectly. And in the past, I've 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 really enjoyed making these albums in the past, but um, there's always something that I'm like, oh well, maybe I could have done that better, or maybe I don't like the way that that drum sounds, or something like that. Because I'm very feel like I challenged myself, and I made it a point to try every single different genre and put it onto an album um, because I just like love the challenge and I like to show people that I can I can step into their scene yeah. and put out a banger and then step out and then do my own <laughs> thing you know um, so I, I think I think it was just really fun and, and going back to what I said earlier is like there's just a lot of like really awesome people and pure positive kind of people working on the project with me so like I feel like there's like good energy put into it and um, I'm excited for people to hear it for sure. Do you ever sit and sort of listen back through Ruiner or, or Reaper and just kind of like reflect on, on, on that time? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll do a lot of long drives sometimes uh, cause I have family kind of like four hours away from me and you know, I can only listen to so many podcasts. So sometimes I do like to go back and listen to Ruiner or Reverse or my older stuff and just think of where I was at the time and think of where I'm at now and and kind of learn from my past self and what I can improve on. And um, I do, I do. I, I don't go out of my way to listen to my own yeah. stuff every day because I, I <laughs> cringe at the sound of my own voice a little bit sometimes. So, um, but yeah, I, I take a trip down memory lane. I'm 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 like absolutely the same dude like when I'm like editing an interview or something afterwards I'm like I just cannot stand my monotone voice man <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> yeah I, everyone hates the sound of their own voice it's pretty funny it's a strange thing it's a strange thing um yeah. obviously earlier this year like the whole music industry had to put live music on hold uh, and that meant that you had to cancel your world tour um but you, you've bounced back and you've booked some things in with neck deep for 2021 um are you looking forward to getting back on the road yeah i mean first and foremost i hope that that happens i mean fingers crossed yeah i mean who knows what the future holds it's i'm going to remain optimistic but um you know assuming that it does happen um i'm really excited because i'm someone who needs to you know, I enjoy tranquility and I enjoy being up here alone and, and uh, sort of meditating and all that. But I also need a goal and I need to be in forward motion. And it's just being on tour and sharing music with others and making connections with people around the world is like, I think is kind of my personal legend and kind of what I was meant to do. So I feel like during this COVID thing, it's, there is like a definite, definite like pit inside of me. And I'm, I'm itching to get back out there, but you know, hopefully everybody just keeps staying safe. And I know like once live music happens again, it's definitely not something I'm going to take for granted. Me too, man. Me too. It's crazy to think because at this point, I guess we haven't even really got an idea of how it's going to, how it's going to happen. It looks so mm -hmm. bleak at times, but you've got to just kind of keep your head up and, and hope for the best. Yeah, that's all you can do right now, for sure. It's crazy. I saw a post on Instagram today, actually, saying that it was uh, two years this month since you were last in Europe. I think it was your first solo European tour. Um, Please. And the 21st, so that was like two days ago, I was watching you perform live in Manchester. And that just feels like, it feels like so long ago now. 
Yeah, it, it, it does and it doesn't. I don't, I can't decide if like since COVID happened, if, if time's going by fast or slow, it's just some sort of purgatory or something. I don't know. And, and I do think that, uh, you know, it wasn't this past summer, but the summer before I spent the entire summer in Europe and the UK and it was pr maybe the best summer of my life. You know, it's, it's just, it's everyone over there is just, live music hits different for sure like people really really support you and they and they uh they ride for you over there so i mean i can't wait to get back over there I'm definitely itching to no i think that was that was one of my favorite um gigs of that year too just because the, the venue in manchester as well like you said it was so intimate and like the atmosphere mm -hmm. was just so palpable it, it was it was crazy yeah yeah there was there were some really special moments uh on that tour for sure Obviously, uh, you're spending a lot of time at home and, and, you know, working on music. Do you find it difficult to kind of um, separate, like, work and relaxing? Have you got, like, a good work-life balance? Yeah, it's funny that you bring this up because that's, that's, uh, that's, like, this kind of the main staple of Taoism. Something that I'm really interested in is balancing the yin and the yang. And the yang is kind of the the anxiety and the stress and the yin is more of the calm and the internal mind. And, um, you know, peace is an everyday, uh, it's an everyday battle as they say. So to find that balance, I'm not perfect, you know, no one's perfect, but especially in these times, but I'm, I'm, do, I am making more of a concerted effort to hold myself accountable for my daily routine and kind of waking up and being like, okay, I'm going to work on some music, but later I'm going to play some video games with my friends. You know, it's that, that's what life's about. It's, it's about a healthy balance, I think. Definitely, man. Like I've been working at home as well. And it, it's difficult because a lot of the time, uh, I guess you feel like if you're not doing something productive that you're not, you know, it's not valuable time, but you, you've got yeah. to realize, you know, if you're happy in that moment, then that time's valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like you don't need to earn, I don't think that you really need to earn like some time for self care and some time for exactly. relaxation. I think that's right. I know you're a big uh, movie guy as well. Um, uh, have you watched any good movies during this sort of like isolation period? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I watched uh, I watched Poltergeist for the first time actually the other day. What did and you I think? Watched, uh, I thought it was rad. I thought it was really cool. Um, it's just cool to go back and watch like those older movies. But I do feel like you know, from the lens of someone in 2020, like the movie will be like so scary. Mm. And then, and then like some like really cheesy, like eighties VFX thing will come across yeah. the screen and you're like, that looked like Microsoft paint <laughs> and now I'm not scared anymore. Um, but I, that's kind of been the vibe. It's like going back and watching some old ones, watched hereditary too. That was creepy. Um, and hereditary tonight. Hereditary is insane. Like, I, I don't want to spoil it for anyone watching, but yeah, the end's just, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely, like, I didn't feel right for a couple of days after, but I don't know. I, I, I like watching just, like, goofy movies, too. Like, I just watched Hubie Halloween. It was, like, that new Adam Yeah, Stanley I watched movie. that as well. Yeah, yeah. And that takes place at right right near where I grew up. So, I was like, oh, that's awesome. The whole time, I was like, like I know that place, <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, I've, movies are rad. I've just been like desperately seeking out like spooky Halloween movies, like not even like horror movies, just something where the leaves are orange and there's some pumpkins. That's what I want in the movie. Like, I yeah. just want that vibe. Yeah, that's that's the best. I'm looking at the pumpkins and the orange leaves right now. I'm very grateful, but I'm, I think all the leaves are pretty much almost all gone now. I know. There's just something there. about. There's something about October that just, I don't know, it, it hits differently. It's my favorite, my favorite season, I think, with like seconds in them. Yeah, yeah, it's the best. It's, it's, it's like an event. I get so excited for it. Like for two months, I just like gear up for it. And like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't get trick-or-treaters or anything, but like still decorate the house and like get candy and like just, just live in the moment for sure. You've got to, you've got to, that's what it's all about, man. Um, Just before we move on, what what's like your favorite movie of all time if you can pick one yeah uh one that i always like i always come back to or two that i always come back to is like uh no country for old men and the revenant um 
No Country for Old Men, like Coen Brothers are like just amazing, just like vast open cinematography. It's just really dark and there's no mo- there's no uh, music in the entire movie, which I think is really interesting. And then uh, The Revenant is just, I'm obsessed with period pieces and it's so dark and it's in the woods and it's just like uncomfortable in the best way. Mm-hmm. I still need to yeah. see the Reverend. I've seen No Country for Old Men, and it's just it's it's amazing. But no, I still need to see the Reverend. It's one hundred percent on the list. It's amazing. Uh, I know you've still been interacting with fans and stuff on, on Twitter and uh, Twitch, and you're always sort of retweeting them. But I reached out as I always do for some questions from fans. So if you're up for taking a couple of questions from just across yeah. social media. Uh, yeah. I got one from a guy called David McKinley, and he says, "How did you find the new drummer? He's sick." Oh, the new drummer. So yeah, that's X. Uh, uh, I actually found him on YouTube because uh, I watch a lot of drum videos on YouTube, specifically like gospel drummers. Um, okay. Go- gospel drummers are like just a different breed and so good um, because they grow up at kind of in churches and drumming and stuff. And I think I was looking up like gospel chops and stuff like that. And I, I saw the video that I posted on my Instagram of... Uh, Xavier uh just like completely ripping to like this Michael Jackson uh remix and I just was like speechless um and I went to his Instagram and I just was like hey like what's up like what are you doing like and uh we ended up doing a zoom call with me and uh, my guitarist Bert and and X is like you know he's like one of the kindest like down-to-earth dudes as well so you know, like I said, like, it's good to have those in the family. And um, it was kind of a wrap from there. We were like, let's do it. So pretty much uh, we're all going to meet up here soon and start rehearsing and just vibing. And I really can't wait to play with them. That's sick. That's sick. Um, I've got another question here from The Brain Cell. I don't know if it's an artist or a band or something, regardless. <laughs> um, okay, brain cell. Is that how did you get into riding motorcycles? Mm. I get into riding motorcycles yeah so when I was younger I was really obsessed with dirt bikes like really obsessed with motocross and dirt bikes uh when I was in middle school kind of like you know like 11 or 12 I I remember I wanted a, a dirt bike so bad that I pasted a picture of like a Honda CRF like 125 like on my bedroom ceiling so I'd stare at it every morning and uh you know, I ended up doing a bunch of chores, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up getting my first uh, dirt bike when I was 12. And, uh, you know, throughout my teen years, I, I was into motocross and, you know, riding my dirt bike down train tracks and running from Amtrak police and mm-hmm. just always super into that. And, and I knew when I was old enough and when I was mature enough, I wanted to get a, a actual motorcycle. So it was just ever since I was little, like ever since I can remember. You know what? I had a VHS uh, movie that my parents got me. It was like when I was a little, little kid. It was called There Goes a Motorcycle. And it was just, I used to watch it when I was like six, seven years old every day. So I don't know. I was just born with it, I feel like. Have you ever tried to pull off any stunts on the motocross? <laughs> I mean, I used to do a little jumping and stuff, but... I took a couple of scary spills and I was like, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know? No, that's fair enough. I, I've never tried it. I've never tried it. I'm a four wheels kind of guy. Um, yeah. So. Probably better. Probably for the better. Um, Jory Steinkemp wants to know why assholes make it to the top. And if, <laughs> if you were referring to MGK, I, I can understand if you pass on that last tra- uh, question. <laughs> no 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 definitely was not referring to mgk because i've actually met mgk uh a couple times he was on the Fall Out boy tour that we did a couple of dates at super nice dude i think he surrounds himself with some really great people as well i don't know him well whatsoever no it wasn't referring to him i mean i think i i think i tweeted that because it's just like there's just the there's you just see some of these people like blow up overnight and it's just there's just so much negative energy surrounding it and Mm. like you don't have to bring other people down to like thrive you know what i mean and it just makes me angry and it makes me upset to see 
um, some young kid just, you know, blow up overnight and then, you know, take things for granted and treat people like shit, treat people that they work with like shit. And I don't know, man, I think like, and, and to the question, like, why do assholes make it to the top? Because that's like, that's kind of the, the capitalist like model, like, mm -hmm. you know, you got to climb over others, you got to put profit above everything you got to deliver. And a lot of times when you're trying to be quote unquote successful, these morals and these ideas of empathy and compassion and kindness they're not aligned with that like if you're trying to build up amazon you're trying to build up a brand or something like that's not in their corporate ethos like the corporate ethos even for a musician trying to make it to the mainstream is like you know talk to this person so you can get something out of them you yeah. know what i mean and it's all about like leeching from others and and like it's about taking and taking and never giving and just, you know, I've been in this game for a minute now and, and I just keep seeing it happen. And I'm just like, it, it's not discouraging. It's just sad to see. Yeah. And uh, that's why I keep coming back to like work with people who are talented, but also like just good people. I think how, that, that works for everything. How do you like navigate that landscape then? Because obviously that like, you're placed into this kind of model and you've got a kind of, navigate it the best way you can so how, how do you make sure that you're not you know getting involved with you know the assholes of the uh music world well i mean if you decide to to break into the well not if you decide if you eventually break into the music industry you're going to uh encounter people like that cause, yeah because the music industry in its essence like really is just to leech off of young artists and to turn a profit like you don't sign a contract to benefit you. It's to benefit the other person always. So, you know, it's going to happen. But I mean, like, you you know a genuine person when you come across them. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll be kind to everyone regardless. But if I, if I sense some kind of vibe of, like, you know, this person's just trying to take from me or this person isn't treating someone else right, I'll just be like, all right, you know, like, you do you, I'm going to be over here with my friends doing me and we're going to keep doing what we do. And I know that we're going to make it. I know that we're going to keep growing. Um, but I don't want to do it that way. I don't want to do it the fast track asshole way. I think that's, yeah, that's the best way to do it. Just keep yourself, you know, going in your own lane and, and, you know, working ahead positively. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's that, <laughs> it's that LA mindset, man. Like, there's just so many people that are just like just stay away from a man the cloud goblins just do you <laughs> um this final one's from me then um would you ever consider doing a collab with a little known artist that goes by little tofu <laughs> that would be insane nothing nowhere little tofu collab yeah. wow i could do the music video too Oh yeah, I got some ideas. Yeah, Lil Tofu needs to put out a whole tape though. I think I think it's time. I think he needs we'll to come see. back. I think he needs to come back. It, it's, yeah, we'll see. You know what's so bad? I listen to that and I'm like, nah, this is hard though. This is still like so hard. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, plant based raps can go hard too. It, it's the um, the Bruce Lee the Bruce Lee pit bar. That's what so it gets me spin kicking <laughs> on like a Bruce Lee. Yeah, you know the deep cuts. That's impressive. I know the deep cuts. Yeah, man. Like, I, I'm really, I'm really in here. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today, though, Joe. Man, it, it's been sick to finally, like I say, speak to you face to face, and I'm really looking forward to the new album. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Keep killing it. Keep growing uh, what you're doing, and uh, this was fun. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Cool. Cut. All right. <laughs>